So in this segment, I'm going to talk a little bit about food storage, food safety, and just some general things to be looking out for when you're looking at your produce or your vegetables in your kitchen. Um, and we're sticking mainly with produce and vegetables because that's where we see a lot of things that just don't seem right sometimes. In general, for storage and receiving of food, you want to make sure you get your boxes in. They're intact, no signs of pests, damage, but they're coming in with chemicals separate from your fruits, vegetables, or other food. So you want to really make sure you're watching what's coming in through the door. Look for dirty storage containers. Also, if you get a chance, walk out and look at the back of your tractor trailer trucks or other delivery vehicles. If they are lacking refrigeration, make sure you're looking at time temperatures. And you want to make sure in general that you're kind of looking over not just the top of your produce, but take down a layer or two and look through. So a couple of things we're going to talk about is that storing of fruits and vegetables in particular. Um, and a little bit of labeling and dating. So I have a couple examples to show us today. So we do have some beautiful tomatoes. Um, and I say beautiful because you can still get tomatoes that have a couple dings in them. You're looking for that smooth surface of your tomato. It's gonna be firm to the touch. When you store these tomatoes, make sure you don't put them in too cold of your refrigerator. Tomatoes like a little bit of warmth. They grow on a vine and they ripen even when they're green, they can ripen. So put them in the front of your refrigerator or closest to the door of your walk-in. Cucumbers, you can get them in various stages. We're living in the Northeast, so we have a really good cucumber season sometimes in the summer. And then this type of year, we find a little more misfit vegetables. And they're okay too, but you're gonna wanna take and cut off any kind of damage on them and make sure that you're looking at them and inspecting them. Anything that's gotten too whizzled usually means that it got exposed to some cold along the way. And you're gonna wanna make some adjustments to, again, how you handle it, or if a whole case was coming in really bumpy, you might even refuse it because it's not okay. With your peppers, again, the tomatoes, the cucumbers, the peppers, they like heat, they like warmth. So look for soft spots and reject any cases of peppers that have a, a lot of this and report it back to your vendor. You don't wanna buy things that you're gonna have to lose a lot of your product just by cutting it. So have that discussion with your vendor early about returns and how they look at it. Look for damages, look for dirt and debris. Most companies have to perform a minimum cleaning on your produce, so you're gonna check for that. When you get in cases of grape tomatoes that look like this, open them up, take a look at them. See how the tomatoes are. Are they firm? Were they exposed to cold damage? Flip them over, take a whole look. Tomatoes also pack like this have some really great information on the back usually about where they're grown. And a lot of these can trace right back to the farmer who picked them. Now let's talk about some storage of these items. Anything that is cut, like this cucumber, needs to be stored below the 41 degrees. Reason why, bacteria can form on cut fruits and vegetables. So if you take this cucumber and you slice it with a knife and the outside of it had some bacteria you didn't remove during general cleaning, the knife can spread it throughout the rest of the produce. And because of that, you could potentially be getting a lot of people sick. So make sure you store anything that you've cut in a food secure bag. Notice we did not put this in a Tupperware container that says margarine on it or anything else. This is meant for food storage. What's missing from here are a couple of things. We need to put the date that this food was produced on. That date helps tell us when we have to discard, sell, or otherwise use this product in a commercial kitchen. What you do at home may be different, but in a commercial kitchen, the rule of thumb for food that is time and temperature sensitive, such as these, you have seven days in which to use it. Most kitchens will last two to three, but the general guideline is seven days for food that needs time and temperature control for safety, such as these cucumbers. Most kitchens, you usually have some masking tape, a Sharpie, or you have a bag that already has that there. Train your staff to mark, label, and date, so that way you know when to throw out your produce, how long you've had it, without going back to an invoice slip. Make sure when you're labeling your produce that you put a date and name that people understand. Well, you might have on the menu that these are a specialty cucumber and they're called Cindy's Cukes. Please label it what it is, cucumbers. 
Don't name the menu name or anything fancy. It is not superstar cucumbers. Today it is just cucumbers. Put the date on it that you prepared or prepped it. If you are unaware, find the person that did prep it. And if you really don't know, throw it away because you don't want to get anyone sick. Again, this food has seven days from the time it was cut to the time that you use it. If it gets used in other ingredients into a bigger dish, again, that dish is going to be labeled with the, the expiration date of the earliest one. Another example. In this bowl, we chop some garlic, and it is ready for service that we can use for sauteing, adding to potatoes, roasting, whatever you want to do. Again, it's missing a date. You're going to want to put a date on it. Now this garlic, if it's added to a chili and it expires seven days from now, you're going to make sure that your chili has the earliest date on it of the most sensitive item. Meaning that if you make your ground beef today, but you chopped your garlic yesterday, you only have six days left. Now occasionally we go into a kitchen and somebody's cleaned off the salad bar and they've left all the ingredients in the pan to go out tomorrow, which is absolutely fine. Except you gotta make sure it has a date. The other thing to be aware of is making sure that the saran wrap is put on correctly. So that way it doesn't blow off in your walk-in. Sometimes loose saran wrap gets sucked up into the compressor if it's stored too closely to fans. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have a good seal on it and that again, you put a label and date on it. Make it a practice to go in your walk-ins, reach-ins, and check on a frequent basis. One of the most common ones that I've seen in kitchens is someone opens up cheese for pizza and they use half of it today. They're using the other half tomorrow. They still need to label and date that product. That way we know when to use that cheese, first in, first out.